like 30 miles into the ride and my legs feel like they have very little left. No. no, thanks. Come on. You love fireball. No. Thank you. Well, two months ago, we challenged ourselves on the Grey Lock Century Challenge. Unfortunately, with the lack of training volume, our mental and physical strength was not quite there yet. Ahead, I could see Jason's flashing light. Welcome, Mount Greylock Summit. Elevation, 3,491 feet. This time we wanted to test ourselves by signing up for the tour of the Catskills. Prior to this event, we bumped up our volume by completing a century ride at the Cape and competing in a gravel grinder segment race, the Macedonia Gravel Grinder. Both took us over six plus hours to complete, both tested our bodies and mental capacity, and in both, our legs felt strong. We signed up for the 74 mile route, which includes over 6,000 feet of elevation gain and a massive climb at the end, Devil's Kitchen. According to Strava, the Devil's Kitchen climb is 2.37 miles long, 10.2% average grade, and a max grade of 23.5%. I've heard horror stories of this climb, people dying a thousand deaths just to ride up it. But for some sick reason, we were fine with that. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to today's video. Uh, today, we are getting ready for the tour of the Catskills. This is our second event that we have signed up for that is uh, on the road bikes. So we're really excited to, to ride this. It's our first time doing this event. And we're actually, we stayed one mile down the road from the starting line. So we're just going to, it's about, it's 7.30 now. So we're gonna leave here at 8.30 because the ride starts at nine o'clock. This is the same bikes that we've ridden, uh, we've taken with us to Mount Greylock. And these are the Fizari Empire SL. And it's probably really hard to see on camera now because it's a little dim in the, in the house here. But we have this uh, 36 tooth cassette in the back because there's going to be a pretty steep climb, a pretty brutal climb at the end of this ride. It's called the Devil's Kitchen Climb. So uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing what that's gonna be like. I'm kind of nervous because our coach sent us a clip, a uh, video clip that someone recorded of the entire climb that they, they, they did. And it looks pretty brutal. We've done Kingsley Hill uh, when we did the Greylock Century and I think we're a little bit more prepared. Also, we did Macedonia Gravel Grinder two weeks ago, which had a lot of climbing. So I'm hoping that we'll be ready for, for this event. Yeah, pretty excited for today. It's This is not actually a race, it's more of a Grand Fondo, um, but we're both sort of treating it as, I don't wanna speak for both of us, but I think we're both treating it as sort of practice, you know, riding with a, a big group um, on the road. Like Joy mentioned, this is only the second organized road bike ride that we've done. Um, so, and there's, I think about 300 people signed up for the distance that we're doing, which is the 74 mile one. Um, so there's a fair amount of, of riders and, you know, we're hoping to, to ride with a group as much as we can so that we can you know, learn how to how to ride with a big group because we, you know, we just don't have a lot of experience yet. And that's something that we're going to need as we try to get more into racing. We're riding over to the start of the event, which is just a mile down the road here. and uh, figured once we finish, we'll just ride back to the house. It's a little chilly this morning, not too bad. Temperature is starting to go up a little slightly. 
Yeah, there's a chance of thunderstorms later in the day. Like, it's saying 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Hopefully we'll be done before then. I feel like I'm running out of breath. Do you feel that way or is it just like the elevation? I don't know. Well, more out of breath than I should be. Like, not out of breath, but like breathing harder than I should be. The tour of the Catskills starts at Tannersville, New York, a small town with a big appreciation for the outdoors. People could enjoy winter outdoor sports like skiing and hiking and biking in the summer. This was our first time at Tannersville and we were floored by the scenery, especially the tall green mountains and the small town feel. The goal for this event was to practice my pacing because I struggled with that in Macedonia. This was especially important as the Devil's Kitchen was going to put some hurt on the legs at the end of the ride. Shortly after rolling out of downtown Tannersville, we found a small group of guys who were going at a pace that we could keep up with while in their draft. After a couple of miles, another small group joined us, forming a moderate sized group of about 20 riders. Within this group, we had the pleasure of riding with our buddy Quen, a viewer of our channel who we met at last year's Macedonia Gravel Grinder. Hey buddy. stuck with this group for the first 20 miles or so, which is the easiest part of the route. It's slightly downhill, so we were able to keep pedaling, and thanks to the group dynamics, we averaged 24 miles per hour for this stretch of the ride, which is much faster than we've ever gone on our own for that distance. Shortly after riding up the first hill, I noticed my legs weren't feeling 100%. They felt heavy, but I was only doing zone 2 power. I use this as a reminder to pace myself because if I feel this way now, it might be worse before I hit the one climb that mattered the most. I found that by staying inside the draft of riders, mostly men, in front of me was the best strategy. Don't close any gaps, let the men do it. My coach suggested not to hit 240 watts in any of the hills just to keep up with the group. Pace as much as possible and eventually I will catch the group. For the first 20 miles, I average 120 watts moving at 23 and a half miles per hour at an average heart rate of 162 beats per minute. <laughs> During our time riding with the group, my average power was in zone 2, but I did have to go into zone 3 whenever there was a short incline in order to prevent myself from falling off the back. So my normalized power was slightly above zone 2 for this duration of 50 minutes or so. This was pretty much in line with what I wanted to do while riding in the group. I wanted to avoid going above threshold as much as possible until we hit the steep Devil's Kitchen climb at the end of the ride. However, I did end up taking a pull at the front of the group in which I went above threshold, but it was for less than two minutes. I made this move because I wanted to contribute to the group's effort, and I also wanted to learn how it feels to ride at the front of the group, the middle of the group, and the back of the group. The group dynamics are something that I want to get more practice with as I get more into racing. What I learned from this was that it's best to be in the middle of the group from a power preservation standpoint.
when I rode at the front, I was doing almost 100 watts more power to go the same speed as when I was in the draft. And although riding at the back of the group theoretically allows you to save a lot of power, I found that I had to be careful about sticking to the wheel in front of me. If I let my attention slip and didn't respond fast enough to any surges, I found myself drifting off the back and I would have to surge harder to get back on the group. When I was in the middle of the group, I found it a little easier to respond to any surges quickly and stay in the draft. Shortly after the 20 mile mark, we were about to hit the first climb of the route. There was an aid station that I was planning on stopping at to fill another water bottle because I only brought two bottles and the second aid station would be roughly three hours into the ride. I'm normally a one bottle per hour kind of guy, but I failed to stick with my plan. I wanted to stay with the group and I didn't stop at the aid station. In hindsight, this was a dumb move because in less than a mile, we would start climbing and I knew I would probably have to let the group go anyway. But I got lost in the excitement of going fast within a group and I lost sight of the bigger picture of hydrating myself properly throughout the ride. We approached the first climb of the day. Jason told me, remember Garrett Thomas. This was my cue to go at my own pace and not follow the group. I continued with a steady pace, but the legs still felt heavy. It was exceptionally difficult though, because the group was leaving me behind. I had to fight the urge to keep up with them and it took a lot of patience and discipline to stick with this plan. Trying to stick with the group on the climbs would have required riding above threshold for long periods of time, and that surely would have blown me up. So I was patient. I settled into a sustainable pace just below threshold. This section of the route consisted of five climbs separated by short descents, all of which are moderate grades, nothing that's super steep. Nevertheless, somewhere in the middle of this series of climbs, I started to lose my mojo. Actually, I could tell on the first climb that my legs didn't feel great, and by the time we finished the series of climbs, my legs felt dead. Even zone two power felt difficult at that point, and I was surprised by that. I thought I had prepared well for this ride. I tapered leading up to the event, I carb loaded the day before, and I was fueling well during the ride, at least from a calorie and carb standpoint. Of course, I was probably underhydrated in hours two to three of the ride because I had only one bottle left and had to ration it until we reached the second aid station. I had a bit of a dark moment there. I was disappointed and a little demoralized that my legs were feeling fatigued only 30 miles into the 74 mile ride. But the fatigue seemed to be isolated to my legs. Mentally I still had a strong desire to finish the ride strong, but my legs weren't cooperating. Here, oh, look who I caught up to. 
for a while you were ahead there. Joy wasn't feeling great either, but she seemed to be pushing through it better than me. She urged me to ride behind her for a while, which I did, and she helped pull me along to the second aid station, which was about 48 miles into the ride. I am not feeling good today. We're only like 30 miles into the ride and my legs feel like they have very little left. So, I'm just gonna try to finish this ride and try to conserve as much energy as I can until we get to the final climb so that hopefully I can at least make it up that climb. So, pretty disappointed. Spirits are, uh, are down right now. Hopefully I can get them back somehow. My God, this is like, Kind of terrifying. I was hoping that getting more fluids and giving my legs a break from pedaling would help turn things around and I think it did. At the aid station, I ate two bananas and refilled both water bottles. In one bottle, I used the EFS hydration mix from a First Endurance, and in the other bottle, I used the Scratch hydration mix that has 50 milligrams of caffeine in addition to the electrolytes. We approached the second aid station where I refilled my two bottles and ate a bar. I also brought my own electrolyte mix this time as I learned from my mistake at Macedonia. Since this was a relatively long day on the saddle, let's talk about fueling. At the start of the ride, I ate a protein bar which had 280 calories. Then I took a gel before the start of the first climb. After the series of climbs in the middle of the course, I took another gel. Each gel has 110 calories, and each bottle also has 110 calories. The total calories I took in for the first 48 miles was 1,110 calories. This may seem a lot, but ever since I learned about fueling from our coach, this really helped me to get through the entire ride, which includes a Devil's Kitchen climb without feeling completely depleted. I tried to take in another shot of gel before we approached Devil's Kitchen, but for some reason the gel went missing. I think I might have accidentally thrown it out along with my garbage at the second aid station, but my bottles had 80 calories each in them, so I was not too worried. Besides, it was relatively flat before we hit Devil's Kitchen, so I wasn't working super hard where I burned too many calories. Not sure if Jason mentioned, but uh, our legs are pretty, uh, pretty dead. Shortly after leaving the aid station, my legs started to come around a little. They still didn't feel great, but at least doing zone 2 power felt sustainable. We rode on rolling roads for the next 18 miles or so. The big climb of the day is starting soon. A few miles before reaching Devil's Kitchen, I took two shots of maple syrup and drank most of my remaining scratch mix. I was hoping for a caffeine boost and I wanted it to kick in while we were on the climb. As we approached the base of the climb, we saw a large truck up ahead that was blocking both sides of the road. Well, that'll kill your, mo that'll kill your momentum. What? 
Really? Really? Devil's Kitchen is the name given to the climb that goes up Platte Cove Road. It's about 2 miles long with 10.6% average grade. Overall, I would say that the majority of the climb is over 10% grade. So it's a grind, even with compact gearing. There's no way around it. I immediately thought of this game Jason and I would play when doing endurance rides around town. There's a half mile hill on the way back to our house that has a relatively steep switchback. The game is to try to get below threshold or 190 watts for me on the steepest sections. It's actually a great technique to use because it forces you to pace yourself and not blow up. It's one of the many reasons why some start and stop frequently on this climb because they probably haven't quite mastered the art of the grind. Once we started up Devil's Kitchen, I pretty much forgot about everything that happened earlier in the ride and just focused on driving my feet into the pavement in front of me. In terms of pacing, I didn't have a particular power number I was shooting for. I knew I didn't have my best legs, so I wasn't going to attempt any heroic efforts. I just did whatever it took to go up the steep sections without having to zigzag or get off the bike and walk. The reason I didn't want to zigzag across the road was that there were a fair amount of cars driving on this road, more than I expected. Car back. I think my legs need a new transmission too. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I like this one. It's all my bikes. I gotta get the money back. <laughs> Next time we're doing this shit in the bus. I must have timed my carb and caffeine intake well because my legs started feeling less bad. On a climb like Devil's Kitchen, I don't think my legs would ever feel really good, but in this case they felt good enough to keep pushing forward, and that was all I needed to survive it. if I climbed out of the saddle, that would use more energy, but at the same time, relieve pressure on my groin and back. So I decided that when section crests and dips down to single digit grades, I would climb out of the saddle, but not for too long. Zigzagging was another method I used when cars weren't around. This method was challenging to execute because there were a number of cars on the roads due to a detour.
But whenever a steep section approached at the last half of the climb, I would zigzag and then climb out of the saddle at the last few feet. I completed the segment in under 27 minutes, which is within the range of what I thought I was capable of and faster than I expected based on how I was feeling earlier in the ride. Ten years later. No thanks. You want water? No, we don't have any water. Sorry. Oh, I was gonna say you could pour water on my back. How about, how about no. fireball? No, thanks. Come on, you love fireball. No, Maybe thank you. Cinnamon. It'll taste great when you're throwing up later. <laughs> My finishing time was certainly not something to write home about, but I did get eighth among the women on the climb and that result surprised me. I think with lots of patience, grinding and willpower, it is most certainly doable. Uh, let me see if I have enough here. I guess it doesn't hurt to get yeah, more. It's not, gonna, it's not gonna hurt you at this point, it's just roll one. Yeah. So. At the top of the climb, I stopped at the water station to refill and catch my breath before regrouping with Joy and heading back into Tannersville. The last six miles was gently rolling terrain which we welcomed after such a tough climb. For some reason, I felt like I had a second wind at this point. I'm not sure if it was from the caffeine or just adrenaline, but I made one last effort to catch a group that was up the road. After chasing them unsuccessfully for a few miles, Joy and I eventually sat up and cruised our way into town and crossed the finish line together. Our debut at the tour of the Catskills was a great experience. It had some ups and downs. We didn't have great legs and had to push through some tough moments, but we came away with some good memories. Riding fast with a group at the beginning of the ride was a blast, and riding very slow up Devil's Kitchen at the end was also fun in its own sick way. It was nice to see a few familiar faces and a lot of new ones. This event brought together a lot of different people who share a love of cycling. It was well organized and supported. The aid stations had plenty of water and snacks, 
and the police were directing traffic at all of the major intersections, which made the ride nice and smooth for us. Also, the roads were mostly in good condition and the surroundings were scenic. We definitely plan on returning to the tour of the Catskills in 2024. For any of you who live in the Northeast US, we hope to see you there. Overall, this was such an amazing experience on pristine upstate New York roads, despite having bad legs. The views were breathtaking. The climbs were also breathtaking in a different kind of way, and the descents were exceptional. The aid stations were well stocked with my favorite thing, Poland Spring water. The support was top notch, making sure riders were safe in open roads, and the police did a great job at directing traffic at intersections. If you are considering doing this event and want to challenge yourself, I highly recommend doing it. Make sure you have enough low gearing on the climbs as they will test your legs. As always, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button to help out the channel. Also, don't forget to enjoy the rides.